I found myself in a position where I was uh, on a blind date with a Playboy model that was going really, really badly. And we were in my car and uh, I noticed in her neighborhood there was a child having a Blue's Clues birthday party. And I happened to have in my car, surreptitiously, I happened to have the outfit from Blue's Clues and a bunch of merchandise and the whole thing in the car. And so in order to save the date, I got dressed as the character from Blue's Clues and authentically crashed this kid's fifth birthday party and blew his mind and really froke all the kids out and the mom lost her mind and the dad was really suspicious but um, it really it really kind of saved that date you know it's just about this weird kind of chain of events that uh, at the time I thought was really good judgment and uh, it kind of looked like it was gonna lead that way and then in the end uh, not so much go figure mailing dead animals not a good idea no, no he didn't would you call the cops on this face no. <laughs> he probably should have <laughs> one night woken up in the middle of the night and there's someone in my apartment with me it is a woman who lives upstairs who's a nurse and she is, has a knife, and she is telling me to get out of the building. Um, that's sort of the, 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 that's what the story's about. And it's, you know, like, and she's sending me mixed messages. She's like, visited me in the, in the middle of the night, but uh, she's got a knife with her. So I started with stand-up and improv and musical theater, and uh, I didn't know anything about storytelling, and I enjoyed those things, but with stand-up, I just couldn't, get my grounding the way I wanted to. So a friend of mine had a storytelling show and it was basically just these little five minute stories that people were telling, but they were funny. So it was kind of like long form stand up or like, you know, long narrative stand up. Kind of like if you're thinking about like what Bill Cosby does, like he's telling stories with jokes in there. That's what it was. And I was like, well, I have stories, you know, I think I could do this. And I started doing that. And I really, really loved it. Storytelling is nothing I ever considered doing. Um, I happen to kind of know Catherine Burns from The Moth. I happen to know her friends peripherally. And we live in the same neighborhood and we met at a coffee shop. And uh, she said, I bet you have some crazy stories. And I said, I don't think so. And we started talking and it turns out I have a lot of crazy stories. To me, it kind of works best when the information that's happening is happening for the first time in the room with the people. That's why, that's why any dinner party story is riveting. If it feels rehearsed, if it feels like, oh, this is the joke I'm about to tell you, that can be entertaining, but it, it doesn't feel as authentic. Um, well, I've always like written, um, but I wanted to be like every hippie from the 60s. I wanted to be a rock star, you know, guitar player, was in bands, and that, that was my dream. And then, um, then I got too old, and then eventually this kind of storytelling thing came along, and it was, it was kind of like low-impact rock star. You know, I could get on stage, I could perform, I could be myself in front of people just by telling stories about myself, which is what, you know, writing songs was sort of about. No, I spend Valentine's Day a lot uh, eating cashews and watching the Mythbusters. Yeah. Cashews and it just seems to be the way it works out. Um, and I've been married forever, so now it's just kind of like, happy Valentine's, <laughs> and you can like stay at home and watch Netflix and have a bottle of wine. Kyle? No, I don't have my glasses on. Okay, you're not my husband. <laughs>